came out of the water and there was quite a big deficit to Jeremy, so that, that kind of pushed me to really focus on the bike. And uh, yeah, when I passed him, I still felt really good, so I just kept going. And then that final climb up to Volcano, I, I still felt excellent, so I just gave it uh, everything that I had. Um, yes, I was I was super happy with the day one bike, and it's yeah, I'd, I've done a lot of higher intensity bike training, and that paid off. And uh, the day two, though, I mean, that was a rough day one in terms of the wind, in terms of the weather. That was uh, causing some havoc behind you, but you handled it very well. But day two, were you stunned by the speed of Selikov? Because he really tore out there, and you and Tony were trying to chase him down. Uh, yeah, so going off at the, at, at the start, um, I was riding next to Arno, and he said, is it a controlled start? And I said, no, you can just go for it, mate. And then he did. He certainly did. I mean, that was a massive performance. And, and then, of course, you got him and Jeremy Howard at that point. You had the target on your back, and you knew, as always, it would come down to the run. Obviously, you've put a lot of training in. You were telling me, Colleen de Roeke, uh, uh, there was one of the people that you had been uh, working hard with there. And can you tell us what was your strategy? It looked to us as though you were thinking of starting steady, but then trying to pour it on in the second half. That is, in fact, what happened, because at one point, it you, you seemed like you were giving away 22 minutes in the first marathon, but you knew the deficit was just over 40 minutes. But what was going on in your mind at that time? So, uh, yeah, all my, my training has been at a, at a much faster pace than the eight-minute miles I would need to run a seven-hour double marathon. So it was it, it, the good thing was that I knew I had uh, something in reserve if I stuck to that that pace. Um, so I felt very good going through the the marathon at 3:30. It felt like I was I was right on plan. Um, yeah, and I just I kept on conserving energy until I had about the, yeah probably the last half marathon, and then I I knew I had to really keep it on full just to make sure that I, you know, I, I would keep that gap with Jeremy to the to the minimum which I mean it ended up being super close four minutes is, is nothing well I'm sure it helped also Joanna Zeiger was another person you trained with fourth place in the Olympic Games but the expectations were high after coming in la from last year second to Inyaki seeing Inyaki on the team with Jeremy was that a little intimidating as well well last year Inyaki gave me a, a, a master class in pacing this double marathon so I, I will just thank Professor Inyanki for his for his lesson that I learned last year and executed this year. And it must have been really pleasing to have your, your family here with you to witness this. Moving from a major win, obviously, in Florida and uh, beating out David Gething there, and David led you on the run. You were second to finish there here. You're second to finish the run, but after finishing second here last year, you came back with a vengeance. You took a title. It was very, very close, just over five minutes. You must be absolutely thrilled. Oh yeah, I'm absolutely thrilled. Yeah, that that run is absolutely at the limit. I could not have run you know, a minute faster than that. So uh, yeah, that, that's what competition does. It really brings out the best in you. And um, you know, Jeremy really pushed me to to do my absolute best today. And I'm sure there's a few people you'd like to thank. Oh yeah, there, there's. I mean, obviously my uh, my family. So my wife Michelle and my kids who are here to support my amazing crew. Ian, ran, Ian did Ironman Arizona, uh, which was, what, a week ago? And he ran almost 20 miles with me today. He's, he's actually lying in the van. He's got severe dehydration. So we're going to get him off to the hospital to get an IV. Uh, but yeah, he, he really put himself in the, in the hurt locker to help me out. Um, yeah, we had Kerry and Michael as well. Uh, and they did a great job. They, they just kept me on top of my nutrition, on top of the plan. Uh, they just kept me focused on what I had to do and, and made sure that I, uh, that I could do it. And then obviously the the people that I've you know, I've really surrounded myself in all three sports with with people who really help me, um, and you know obviously running with Co Colleen and Joanna I, I view it as a good day if I can keep up with them on, on our weekly training, uh, so that's been great. And in, in the swim I have uh, you know, Lisa Lessing and Monica Byrne, uh, done some work with Eni Jones, who's a great swim coach. Monica Byrne, isn't that Gordo Byrne's wife? Uh, it is. Uh, yes, he's not in agreement. Don't forget, Gordo Byrne was one of our champions here. And these are the. He and Scott Molina put on the epic camps. And of course, uh, Scott was the 1984 winner of this event. Uh, so tell me, how is it as a coach as well to just witness one of your own athletes complete these world championships? It was, it was amazing. So Amy, Amy absolutely stuck to the plan. And. Uh, she just executed an excellent race. Um, yeah, I was I was kind of worried yesterday with with those wind conditions. She's very light, so I, I was hoping she wasn't going to get blown off a cliff in, on the Kahalas, and she didn't. And she she just yeah, handled the bike well, 
uh, executed perfectly, and today was just a, a you know, premium execution. Uh -oh. yes. Something I said.